even if you've never had dealings with the police, you know the phrase. Open up, police, we have a warrant. A warrant is a formal document allowing the police to enter places and carry out searches. But there's a whole other bunch of powers police have too, warrantless searches. Uh, a warrantless search is when something happens in the moment and there are certain powers that the police can use to, to then, um, just uh, on their own discretion, search a premise or a car or a person um, because there's not, supposedly there's not enough time to go and get that search warrant. Last year, there were almost 10,000 warrantless searches carried out in New Zealand. And a staff investigation has found certain police stations are busier when it comes to carrying out searches, including Otahuhu, Mararewa, and Henderson. No, no, no uh, it doesn't surprise me that Henderson's one of the biggest um, warrantless search agencies. Massey Henderson uh, is the second largest concentration of Māori population in the whole of Auckland, and 25% of the total Māori population of the North Island live here. So our next biggest, of course, is uh, over in Manirewa. That's the biggest. Second biggest is out here. So when you get the concentration of your communities, uh, policing concentration follows it, just follows where the concentrations of Māori and Pacific Island peoples are. The question is, why, why should that be the case? Because if you over-regulate, you're going to over-find. John Tamahedi is not alone in thinking Māori and Pacific communities are targeted. So working in uh, Manukau, I've been a defence lawyer here for a few years, and this community police stops and police interactions are um, nearly a daily occurrence for my clients um, and for their whānau. Uh, that daily occurrence is something that you'll really find in, in more um, in areas like Parnell or St Heliers. You know, if you, if you have a young person the same age as my clients, uh, I would suspect that they probably not even once a year might, might see a police officer in their community, um, let alone have an interaction with them. And I think people forget that there is a there is over-policing in, in our communities like Manurewa and Manukau. Kingi Snelga has taken appeals, trying to have warrantless searches declared illegal. The cases that I've um, challenged searches are about are um, to do with what I saw as racism within the discretion of the police. And the reason why I wanted to challenge it was to peel back the layers of what, are, what were the reasons for why um, these young Māori people were targeted for driving a car or being around a car. And when you focus on what are the, the key reasons for why, um, in the cases that I've looked at, police um, decided to stop this car, um, it really boiled down, in my view, to race. Uh, there wasn't really anything specific um, about their behaviour, there wasn't anything um, uh, unique about it, but really the police, um, when I challenged it, would say that there was something dodgy about it or um, that, that I was doing policing. Um, and when I challenged that, uh, that issue then, yeah, they did kind of got to a point where it seemed like race was one issue, but um, police are very reluctant to accept that. Uh, and I think it's important to hold police accountable for their actions. Stuff has analysed the 14,000 searches carried out in 2018 and 2019. And there's something surprising. Some stations serving communities with a higher share of Māori and Pacifica residents are more likely to see higher warrantless searches when compared with stations of similar crime rates. Henderson, in particular, is a weird outlier. I often hear that, um, quoted it all that, well, you sh if you're not doing anything wrong or you've got nothing to hide, you just let us have a look, and that's something that police will often say. The problem is the places that they're looking are Māori and Pacific places in the first place. They're not in St Hallie's or Mpah now stopping cars um, or you know, trying to enter houses or stopping kids on the street to search their bags in those areas. It's in Manurewa, it's in Monaco, um, it's in um, places that, that where a lot of people live in poverty and survival is, is difficult every day. And you know, I'm not, they, they make bad decisions, obviously, like, like anyone that's in, in, in a difficult position. Um, but it's that uh, constant surveillance by the police that builds resentment and that intergenerational resentment. There's another aspect to the use of warrantless searches. A section of the law known by some lawyers as the washing machine clause. 
So Section 30 of the Evidence Act governs whether or not evidence is admissible um, in, in any given case. And when it comes to breaches of search and seizure law, um, there's a two-pronged or two-step test uh, created by Section 30, which means that if police breach our rights um, in conducting a search, then the court has to apply Section 30 to figure out what to do with that breach, um, whether the evidence is still admissible or not. So it sort of the section creates a set of factors that the court will take into account, and the fact that our rights have been breached um, is only one factor. Um, among many that they'll take into account. So, the, so the, the upshot of Section 30 is that our rights may be breached through a, a search uh, by police, but that evidence that they find may still uh, be admissible and used, and there may be no accountability. So even when a search is illegal, if the police find something, it can be allowed under Section 30, the washing machine clause. The message from the law and, and then through through the courts to, to police is that it's maybe it's okay to breach rights because then if you find serious evidence, um, you know that that factor will will likely um, uh, mean that the evidence goes in anyway. So go ahead and have a look. And I, I know you know I don't necessarily blame police for taking on that mentality because the law is sending them that message. What I would like to see is that we go back to a system where we prioritise the New Zealand Bill of Rights Act um, when it says that we all have a right to be free from unreasonable and unlawful search and seizure. Um, if that right is breached, then the evidence should rightly be excluded from a case and I think that would then result in police being much more careful. In an interview with Stuff, Police Commissioner Andrew Costa said his staff were under no illusion that searches needed to be lawful and appropriate. And he had seen no evidence of officers behaving unprofessionally. He also told staff that while the raw data around searches was, quote, appalling in terms of racial disparity, it was a complex area. Police were working to understand what was causing the issue. No officer, he said, went to work to deliberately disadvantage any particular group. 